Hey guys, welcome back for another video. I've got something coming today. I've got more acoustic treatment. And it's not specifically for the living room slash home theater, but it's to help with the noise floor while in here. So what I'm doing, and you kind of notice this, once you get into room treatment, you'll place something and all of a sudden you notice a problem somewhere else. Before I put this stuff up, this entire house was just an echo chamber. And talking right now, and even on some videos that I record in here, you hear echo, it's not from this room. It's from this hallway. Mainly from this <laughs> huge wall right here and the corresponding one on the other side. It's tough doing this in a mirror, let me tell you. So that's what I'm gonna be treating today. I've got 32 square feet of more panels coming in and I'm aiming to cover as much of this wall and have it look good as possible. And this is going to treat at least three different things. So I've taken a base reading, the quietest it ever gets in here with nothing running, no AC, no refrigerator, no ceiling fan, uh, no home theater gear on, is 37 dB. That's baseline and it, it's hardly ever that quiet. Actually, right now, if the puppy wasn't playing, the fridge just shut off, so this is the only time it gets this quiet. Sun's about to really come up over the trees, and the AC will be running during the day. So this is about as, as quiet as it's ever going to get. But when the AC runs, I get noise from two different places, primarily from the main return vent. There are multiple return vents in the house, but this one right here, unfortunately, is central to the house. It works really well for AC, not so great for noise. I have looked into a high velocity return grate, but this one isn't that noisy to begin with. There's no whistle, there's no air intake noise. It's just the sound of it working. And unfortunately, the only thing that I could do to really quiet the source of the noise there would be to replace the ducting with much larger diameter ducting to reduce the air velocity. That's not gonna happen. I mean, that's a big AC issue. So what I wanna do is try to mask the noise of this. And it's primarily bouncing off this wall in this region and coming right back to my couch. So my thought is if I can block this wall as much as possible, it's gonna stop a lot of the reflected noise from everything up here and in the kitchen. The fridge is not terribly loud. It really isn't, and you only hear it when the AC is off. It's that quiet, but it does add a few dB. When it's running, my noise floor is 40 dB. So, I mean, it's barely audible, but it's still audible, and that's primarily coming through this big opening here. So I don't expect this wall to do too much with that. It's not a direct line of sight. Sitting in the chair here, it's about like that. So, well... Yeah, maybe it's bouncing just a little bit. What you're seeing is what I hear from sitting in the seat here. We'll see, I don't know. The other noise is coming from the uh, actual AC condenser unit, which is right outside the kitchen windows, uh, right on the other side of this wall here. So you do certainly hear that running. Um, it's about equal between that noise and the return air noise. So neither one alone is terribly loud, but combined, yeah, I mean, it definitely makes a difference. I have to wait and, well, you know what? Alexa, set the temp to 78. Um, not 78. I can't speak. Alexa, Alexa, set the temp to 68. That'll kick it on. So I'll take a reading right now and see what it's at with that, and we'll see what we get now. So with the AC running, the noise from the return and the condenser unit, it's up to 49 dB. So 49, 50 dB if the fridge was running, that's my realistic noise floor in here. So that's what I want to try to bring down. Will it happen? How much it'll happen? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. And the only reason I hear anything, and I know that this is an issue, is because I have this actual room so well treated, I'm standing on the edge here, you know, what would be the sidewall of the room. And as I'm talking to you right now in the camera, I'm hearing my voice echoing down the hallway out of my left ear. My right ear, nothing, absolutely nothing. This side of the room is nice and quiet and soft and comfy. And this is hard 
and harsh and echoey. And it's obvious because of the room treatment. So just be aware when you get into room treatment, it's a good thing, but you're going to find out exactly where your other problems are real quick. Luckily, it's not expensive. I, I'm getting everything here from the same company that I got these three art panels from, Acoustamac. They're out of Tampa. Relatively cheap shipping. Unfortunately, with COVID going on, I can't go pick the stuff up, save myself shipping. You used to be able to do that. But high quality. I am not a woodworker. I don't like doing it. I'm not good at doing it. And this is not that expensive. Just over 300 bucks, seven different, seven or eight different panels, 32 square feet worth of done, hang it up, all fasteners, good to go. So that was a good deal. And look what just arrived via FedEx. So I've got eight panels total. They're a foot by four foot. I got these charcoal, which are almost black, just a really dark gray. And then these medium gray, which pretty much match our walls. So I'm gonna do a staggered and just see how it looks. I need to get coverage as high up on this wall. I'm not going the full 10 feet up, but I definitely wanna get at least eight feet up, you know, somewhere under the doorbell about here. And I've got eight and a half feet of wall here to work with from the edge to close to the thermostat. So I just wanna make sure that enough of this is covered higher than lower. So I'll, I don't know how I'm gonna overlap them, maybe staggered, maybe all in a row, I don't know. We'll see what looks good. But uh, yeah, that should do the job. Man, you can't beat this quality. It is just top-notch material, super easy just to order. Now I'm gonna be hanging these the same way I did my GIKs with 3M adhesive strips because they work. They work absolutely beautifully. Um, I just use these here, the large size, and they claim that one pack of these, four of these total, is good for 16 pounds. Well, I can tell you they hold the GIKs just fine with four, and they've got the wood on top of them too. No problem whatsoever. Just have to make sure that the wall doesn't have too much texture for it to, to grip to. Now, I painted my house with flat paint, so if you've got eggshell or semi-gloss, I can't vouch for how well this will hold. But here, these work absolutely perfectly. So no holes into the wall. Those over there, uh, I didn't think about this at first. I, I would have if I would have just thought to try them. But I have those hung with the Z-hangers. So I mean, they're, they're totally solid. But these are even heavier and these worked fine. So I could have done these over there without putting holes in the wall. Oh well. So plan A didn't work. I had three of these on each of the panels and got a few up. And by the time I got down the ways, the first one was already coming off. The adhesive part to the wall was just completely not sticking. And after I took them off the wall, they were totally smooth. And what I found was the wall is just too close to the kitchen. And there's a very, very thin film of grease on there. And it's flat paint, so you can't scrub it or anything. So we're going with the Z brackets. Got my laser level up. Makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna do a stagger, high, low, high, low, with a center section solid. That should work. All right, we're done. Time to test, proof is in the pudding. I already know it's going to have an effect. Just a subjective test. Just sitting here, listening to the AC. I'm in my main seat now. The very first thing I notice is, yes, it's a little quieter. It's it's noticeable. It's not day and night. Right now, just the refrigerator is running. The AC is off, so it's very quiet. When the AC is on, the first thing I notice is the tone is totally different. It didn't cut out all the noise, but it cut out a lot of the high frequency noise from that return vent and from whatever was coming in through the kitchen bouncing straight off that wall. So it, it had a dramatic effect. Did it bring it down to the normal noise floor? No, absolutely not. I wish it would have, but no, didn't do that at all. But it did knock down total volume. I can tell that already. How far? Don't know yet. We'll check it out. But they went up really nice and easy. As long as you have a laser level and you just carefully go through and measure things. I use a lot of masking tape to mark positions and used the brackets as templates and bing, bang, boom. Went up no problem. Um, okay, I'm gonna fire up DB meter now. 
and we'll figure out what we're at. Thirty six, thirty seven. the new baseline, and that's with the fridge running. So that's even a couple dB below the total noise floor. Alexa, set the temp to 68. Let's see the magic number. We're looking, set to 68. we're looking for that 49.50 to come down. That was a dog. Forty-three, maybe forty-four. That is awesome. That is a good six to seven dB drop. And just for clarification, I'm taking these decibel meter readings in the C weighting. It is more pessimistic than the traditional A weighting, but I do all of my calibration, all of my equipment measurements and everything in C weighting, which gives a little bit more priority to the low end. It's more full range where the A rating is supposedly more of how your ear hears, but I found this, the C rating to be consistent throughout what I do with the industry and the equipment and all that. So that's what I'm taking these ratings in. So if you're wondering, wow, why are your numbers so high? Well, maybe you're measuring an A, which yes, they're like 10 to 20 lower typically on a scale if I was measuring this kind of thing. So bear that in mind if you're gonna do your comparisons if you're comparing to anybody else you have to know what weighting the gauge is in anyway hope this helps somebody um, i'm not an affiliate for any of the acoustic companies out there i've used gik and acoustimax so far both have had top-notch performance number one that's key excellent quality just flawless construction and really great shipping and service never had a lick of a problem so Highly recommended, however you need to treat your room. DIY is awesome, very inexpensive. If you have the carpenter skills, I don't. I, seriously, I put up, uh, let's see, two times eight times two, 64 of those little freaking Z brackets I had to install for these, two on each, one on each side of the wall and the, the brackets or the panels. Dude, just getting those two screws per bracket Perfectly level and straight, pain in the ass. I'm not a carpenter guy. I'm a mechanical guy. I'm an electrical guy. No problem whatsoever. Wood skills? <laughs> Negative. So I'm not a DIY guy. I could probably do one of those glue together sub kits and that's about it. But as far as cutting these boxes, I would have all kinds of shapes going on. Not for me. If that's you, if you got the tools and the skills, by all means, get yourself some cheap lumber, some insulation and fabric of your choice that's acoustically transparent and go to town. I can't emphasize enough how awesome acoustic treatment in a room is. No matter how inexpensive your system is, it makes it sound so much better. Trust me. That's it, guys. See you next time.